Yeah. We're gonna go praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, eternal rock of ages, I magnify you, Lord. I give you all the praise, I give you all the honor, I give you all the adoration, I lift up the devil to the highest. Eternal rock of ages, we thank you for your grace and mercy that found us again today that make it possible for us to gather again before your presence this morning. Baba, your word says that the battle is not to the strong, then that the race is to the swift. He said, it's not he that runneth, then that is he that willeth, but it's the Lord that showeth mercy. Father, we have seen your mercy again upon our life and our entire heart. So we slept like a baby yesterday and woke up like a baby Lord this morning. It's not by our power, then that is by our strength, it's by your grace and mercy. Baba, we appreciate you. We thank you, we bless you, we adore you. We do obeisance before you, Lord, this morning. Father, we have come again according to your word in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Father, we find rest in your word. We find rest in your house. Baba, God Almighty, I come before you. I surrender my body, so is to Lord, before you this hour. I decrease for you to increase, Lord Jesus. I put my ears, O oh Lord, in your mouth for you to speak to me and speak to me. Father, Lord, as your word come again this morning, let it come with fire and power. I come against every forces of darkness, every spirit of distraction, every spirit of I don't care, every mind wandering demon. I bind and I cast them out of our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I commit the life of your children this morning into your mighty hands. Father, as they hear your word, let their faith again be scared off. Let their faith again be boosted again this morning in the mighty name of Jesus so that they will receive more strength, O oh Lord, to wait upon you in this morning, this praying and fasting in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your most holy name. All glory and honor be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Brethren, we have a message before us. It's not quite different from the message that we have been hearing before. And the title of the message says, Beware of lustful desire. Beware of lustful desire. Brethren, lust can be viewed from two different angles, two different angles, most the, 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 the most the uh, uh, most angle where we view it from is from the sexual desire, but it can also be viewed from the other side again, uh, desiring wealth, desiring the pleasures of life. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Beware of, of lustful desire. Brethren, if you are able to conquer this spirit, if you are able to overcome the spirit of lust in this world that we are living in, you, 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 you will succeed in your Christian race. You will be able to run this straight very well and you will run it to the end successfully. I pray as many of us that will hear this word again this morning, we all will make it to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, what is, what is lust? When we talk about lust, we are talking about an emotion or feeling of an intense desire in the body. The loss can be taken in any form, such as the loss for knowledge, the loss for sex, or the loss for power. When we talk about loss, we are talking about an overwhelming desire or craving, a, 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 a loss for power, or an intense anger or enthusiasm, or lust for life. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, if you if you if you understand this this, this lost very well, if you turn your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter three verse six, the Bible makes us understand. He said, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it, it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Brethren. This was the beginning of the beginning of it all. This, uh, this transpired uh, in the Garden of Eden. What was the problem here? Those, that fruit, that tree, 
of life was with them in that garden of Eden. They saw it all the time. But immediately Satan came with that power of lust. Immediately Satan came into their midst. He was able to brainwash the woman. He was able to deceive the woman. He was able to lie to the woman. But we saw what the the, the, the angle where the woman viewed it from. He said, the woman take a look at the tree again. He desired it. He, he lusted after the tree. And what happened? He desired to take. Because what Satan said was just a little. He himself was already admiring the tree. One day I will eat from this tree. I will look for a way to eat from this tree. But immediately, that propelling force from Satan, that spirit of lust of Satan came. He, he energized every thought that was in the heart of this woman, and this woman ate from that tree. And the Bible makes us understand they fell from the, 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 the grace that was upon them, they fell from the, 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 the seat where God placed them. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, what is lost? Lost is a very terrible thing that we all need to view with all angerness, that we all need to watch out. Each time of our life that we might not slip away from the presence of God. Loss is very powerful. Loss is very stubborn. It's, you need to raise a prayer point for yourself every day and pray against the spirit of loss. If you don't pray against the spirit of loss, it will consume you. It will, it will destroy you. Brethren, I have come to realize during in, in, in the body of Christ, if a sister is lusting after a brother, or a brother is lusting after a sister, he will begin to tell you that the Lord is leading me to, to, to a sister so, so and so. I used to see her in my dream giving me flower. Or I used to see so so brother so so and so giving me flower. Or sister so so and so giving me flower. Because the Bible makes us understand, because that sister or that brother have not this, 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 this sister or this brother into her heart because of her lustful desire. Maybe the brother is rich or the sister is so gorgeous, beautiful, and each, both of them begin to lust after each other. And as a result of that, this brother will begin to dream about the sister or this sister will begin to dream about this brother. At the end of the day, he will not know that Satan is the one giving him or her that revelation. And they will begin to say, the Lord is leading me to a so-so and so brother, which is very, very far from the truth, which is a, a mirage that will never take place. At the end of the day, because of their lawful desire, both, both of them will marry. And by the time they marry, the brother will turn to turn the sister to a point of God. I pray, as many of us that will hear this message this morning, we all will conquer the spirit of love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brethren, turn your Bible to the book of John chapter 8, verse 44. Our Lord Jesus Christ was talking here. He said, ye are of your father the devil. The lust of your father you will do. He was a, he was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Brethren, we all know the devil, what he did in the Garden of Eden that I've just read to you just now. He is a liar, he is a murderer, the spirit of love is his, is his spirit. He came to the that woman in the Garden of Eden. He was able to brainwash her. He was able to pump in the spirit of lust into her. And the woman himself, he said, I saw the tree. The tree was, he said, the tree was good for food. And it was pleasant to the eyes. Just like the way you would say that brother, that sister, is pleasant to my eyes. He will make a good husband. But you don't know what makes up that brother. You don't know that in the innermost heart of the brother, is a devil, or in the innermost heart of that sister, she's a Jezebel. But you are carried away by the by, by, by the beauty. You are carried away by the by, by loss. You are carried away by what you are seeing in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the at, at, at part of it. You don't bother to dig deep to know what makes up this brother or what makes up this sister, brethren. This is the spirit of loss. That we are talking about. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn your Bible to the book of James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1, 
Let's continue. We will get a clearer picture of what I am talking here. James chapter 1, verse 14, I read. He says, For every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Can't you see what the Bible is telling us here? You are you are being enticed as a result of your loss because you are behind that woman. You are behind that, that, that man. You will desire that man in your heart. Any slightest mistake that will make that man to dance to your tune, or that will make that woman to dance to your tune. What do you do? You, you will fall into the sin of immorality. Verse 15. I read verse 15. He said, Then when lust has conceived, note it very well. When lust has conceived, he bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Bringeth forth death. Look at it, brethren. You see the way he starts. If you don't nip it on the board, if you don't address it, this is your 21 days prayer and fasting will be in vain. You need to address it now. I don't know why the Lord is bringing this message to you and I this morning. He's making you and I to understand how the spirit of lost work. Because if you don't nip it at the board, the appearances of loss, you, it will consume you. In other words, you have to be to, to be vigilant. You have to be spiritually alert. You have to be spiritually sensitive. You have to be spiritually conscious. Because before you will know what you are up, what is happening, if you are not careful, you are already swimming in it. Remember, the Bible said, "The soul that sinners shall die." The soul that sinners shall die. He said, "After after you have been drawn away of." He said, is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. Verse 15. He said, And when Lord has conceived, he bringeth forth sin. And when the sin is properly uh, 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 committed, what happened? He bringeth forth death. He bringeth forth death, just like the way it happened to our first parents in the Garden of Eden. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. It says, Wherefore, God also gave them all to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart, to dishonor their own body between themselves. Brethren, what are we talking, talking about here? We are talking about the year of lustful desire. You have to be careful of loss. If you are not careful, before you know what is happening, you are doomed. Before you know what is happening, you are lost in it. And before you know what is happening, it brings death. I pray, as many of us that the Lord has brought to the cave of Adonai, many of us who stay through this spirit of loss in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Turn your Bible to the book of First John chapter 2, verse 15. He said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. That is of this world. But are many of us hearing this today? Take a look at the body of God today. Take a look at the so-called men of God today. Look at the life they are living. Look at their wife. They dress like Jezebel. Look at the man. He's buying fleets of car. It's the spirit of love that has consumed him. I have seen a man. He said, I'm not going to be broke when I get to heaven. I'm not going to be broke when I get to heaven. What was he talking about? He's going to take money along with himself to heaven. When I take a look at that man, I shook my head. The spirit of loss has consumed that man. And this never has started. Yay! Yes, we're not, we are not going to be broke when we get to heaven. Is he taking the, the physical currency to heaven? Well, ah, it is, it, it saddens my heart. If my heart bleeds when I see people talk like this, they still have followers. Why? Because they like the word of God. They still have followers that still go with them because they don't study their Bible. Look at what the Bible is telling us here in this book of First John chapter two. First John, First John chapter two. Verse 15, I read verse 17. It says, And the world passeth away, and the love thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. My beloved brother, my beloved sister, I don't know what is in your mind now. I don't know the decision you are about to take. 
you are about to take now? Is it concerning the life pattern? Is it concerning your job or whatsoever anything you intend to do? The Bible is telling you this hour that you should be, be you should beware of lustful desire. Be careful because if you don't you are not careful with it, it will choke you, it will finish you, it will destroy you. I pray as many of us are the Lord has brought to the cave of Adam, who will not be consumed by the spirit of lust in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. He said, Let no city ever reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lost thereof. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lost lost thereof. Brethren, if you see a woman today, before fornication is being done, before you commit immorality, the spirit of lust must have consumed you. You must have lost it after that brother. You must have lost it after that sister. Without the spirit of lust not being conceived, you will not be able to commit the immorality. Because before you will address that woman, or before that woman will address that man, the spirit of lust must have been played in your heart. The spirit of lust must have been concluded deep in the bottom of your heart before you will carry that that heart. That is why Jesus Christ made us understand. He said, it's not what a man eats that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the heart of a man. What proceeds out of your heart. That is where the spirit of lust proceeds out from. I pray every lustful heart this morning shall be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. He said, Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of in the lust of our flesh. Note it very well. Among whom also we all had our conversation. Everything we do did when we are in darkness. Everything we did when we are swimming in iniquity. Everything was done out of loss. We want to do anything, we do it out of a loss. Desire. We want to choose a life partner, we choose it out of a lustful desire. We want to take the decision, we take decision out of a lustful desire. The Lord is telling you and I, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling you and I this morning. He said, among whom also we all had our conversation in the time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and whereby and whereby na nature, the children of wrath, even as others. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right then, we have to watch this scripture very well. This Ephesians 2 very well. What makes the difference now? You have known the truth. You have been called out of darkness. You have been called out of darkness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. It's, you have been called out of darkness. He said that you put off. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. I read. He said that you put off concerning, put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. Can't you see my question for you, my question for myself, Apostle Peace, have you put off that old man? Do your conversations still dwell in the spirit of laws? Are you still walking according to lustful desire? I pray if that sin is still in me, I pray the Lord will crush it out of us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. He said, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men in destruction and perdition. I pray, as many of us that the Lord has brought into the cave of Adulam, we will not be children of perdition in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, what do we need to do this morning? We need to address that spirit of loss. We need to crush it. We need to destroy it. We need to cry unto God with all the aggression we can gather. My Father, my God, every spirit of loss that is operating in my life, let that spirit die. In the name of Jesus, you know your wicked boy. If you know that the spirit of loss, when you see anything, or you see your neighbor, or you see people around you progressing, you are already lost in after it. You are already, already saying, if this thing were mine, if those children were mine, if this guy were mine, my 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 my, you know that the spirit of loss is at war. You need to destroy it because you will not see, you will not see if you see. 
from somebody that died in your vicinity, you will not say, if I had died. No, you always lost after those materialistic things of life. You also lost after the pleasures of life. That is why the Lord is telling you and I that love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This spirit have creeped into the Christian door. This spirit have consumed men of God that want to acquire the whole world. He said, if any man love the world, love if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that are in this, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of, of the world. Brethren, this is the word of God for you. Verse 17, I said, and the word passed away and the lost thereof. He said, but he that doeth the will of God abided forever. Who are those that do the will of God? Those here, the noble doer of the world, the people who stand in the word of God, according to the book of James chapter 1. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. James chapter 1, verse 22. It said, Be ye doer of the world, and not here, only deceiving your own self. You connect every day in this mountain. You connect every day in this mountain. You, you hear the word of God every day in this mountain. As soon as you disconnect, you begin to do a different thing. You have to cry to the Lord this morning. Be ye the doers of the world, and not yera only. Deceiving your whole self. I pray in any way the spirit of lust have attacked our Christian faith. We crush it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, the Bible makes us to understand in the book of Galatians 5, verse 24. It said, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and the lust. Brethren, if you are truly a child of God, you will wait patiently for the Lord. If you are truly a child of God, you will seek the face of God. If you are truly a child of God, you will say, Even though he takes ages, Baba, I will wait for you to take for you to answer this situation. Brethren, I was in that session before when I was lost in after you stay to stay in this country that I was that I am. I run after women. I do sort of all atrocity in order to get there. But the Lord was saying, my son, that was not the way I've sent you. I have not sent you to run after women. I have not sent you to this world to be consumed by the spirit of loss. And the Lord delivered me. I pray the Lord will deliver as many of us that are here in this world this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. He said, but put it on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the lost to fulfill the loss thereof. Brethren, let everything about you be Jesus. Before you do anything, ask yourself this question. Ask yourself that question. If Jesus Christ will stand in my front here, if Jesus Christ will be here, right here with me, will he be pleased with this decision that I'm taking? Is this decision in accordance with the word of God? Is a question you and I need to be asking ourselves that we will not be consumed by the spirit of loss. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, the Bible makes us understand in the book of Timothy. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Timothy. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 6. I read from verse, let me take it, from verse 6. It says, but godliness with contentment Godliness with contentment is a great gain. I love this scripture so much. This scripture has so comforted me. This scripture has made me not to envy other people's things. It said godliness, but, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. Verse 7, for we brought nothing into this world, and it's setting that it's setting we can carry nothing out. How can the man of God, people are running after him, is saying, I'm gonna be broke, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be broke when I get to heaven. Ah, uh, is he taking the euro to heaven? Is he taking the pastel to heaven? Is he taking the dollar to heaven? And people say, Yeah, 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 they are saying, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, We brought nothing to this world. Certainly, we are taking nothing out of him. First Timothy chapter 6, 7, uh, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. 
I read verse 8 now. He said, Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Let us be there with content. Brethren, do not labor to acquire the materialistic things of life. Seek, keep seeking the kingdom. According to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, he says, Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Keep seeking the kingdom. Everything that comes as you are seeking the kingdom, it will be added unto you. All those are added value. They are added value. The materialistic things of life should not be your, your number one priority. Take a look at Job. I love Job so much. Ever since I read, I've been reading the book of Job. For that day, I read it again. I jumped out from my bed. I said, oh, Baba, have mercy upon me. This was a man that lost it all. Most of us today, we will disconnect because we are waiting upon the Lord for, for one year now. We have been waiting upon the Lord for two years now. We will, we will stop connecting. We said, ah. It's all the time the man of God professor. It's all the time the man of God said you will do this, but it's not coming. But brethren, the Bible is telling you, keep seeking the kingdom because you brought nothing to this world. Certainly you are taking nothing out. Job said, naked I came out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. May the name of the Lord be praised. That tithe that is not making you to serve God is the Lord that gave it to you. That house that is not making you to serve God is the Lord that gave it to you. That husband, that wife, is the Lord that gave it to you. Ever since I understand this thing, I have learned to commit my life and my family into the hands of God. Because you know what? Apostle said one thing. He said, when we all are sleeping, we don't even know we have a children. We don't even know we have a wife. We don't even know if we have a husband. Brethren, if you can begin to use these things, these little, little things, to begin to address your spiritual life, you will become wise. You will become, you will become spiritually conscious. You will be comforted in your Christian race. I pray, as many of us that have had this word this morning, we all we take a new stand in the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is the word of God for you, for me. I pray that we we'll go out and be a practical doer of this word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the word in my heart. May the Lord bless this word in your heart. This word will not be used against you. It will not be used against me. If you are there, you are not sleeping. Shout a thunderous bullet and Jericho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The word of God says, He said, Ye are clean. As a result of the word that I have spoken upon unto you, Jesus Christ was talking here in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord has cleaned you this morning in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 17. He says, Sanctify them with the word. Let me confirm the scripture again. He says, Sanctify them with the word. For the word of God is true. The word of God again has come for you and I. The word of God has sanctified us. I pray every spirit of loss in our life shall die this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, brethren, what do we need to do now? Before we take some few prayer points, are you there? You have not yet given your life to Jesus. Are you there? You have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. The Bible is telling you and I, that he's telling you this morning that you are in darkness. You are an embodiment of lust already. You, you are lost yourself. Because in not this test time, if you do not address it now, you will explode. You are like a time bomb. Come to Jesus this morning. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy lady, I will give you rest. You are loaded. You have to come to Jesus so that he can give you rest. According to the book of John chapter 10, verse 9. To 10, he said, with the heart man delivered unto righteousness, and with the man profession is made unto salvation. Come to Jesus this morning. I don't know where you are hearing the sound of my voice, in the YouTube, in the Google Hangout, or those that might listen to it later that have not yet known Jesus. Say this prayer of confession after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I know that I am a wretched sinner. I acknowledge my sins and my iniquities, Lord. Father, have mercy upon me. I confess my sins before you this morning. Wash me with your precious blood. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I know you died for me. I know you were bruised. I know you were wounded. For me, Lord Jesus, I accept you today. Come and dwell in my life. Come and take total control of my life. Come and take total control 
of my family. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I commit this one for Lord into your hand. Father, they have come to you again this morning. Father, your word says, you say, come unto me, for ye that labor and heavy lady. I will give you rest. Father, your children are come. They need your rest. Father, take away your yoke, Lord, and let them and give them your yoke. It's only your yoke that is not body so. It's only your yoke that is meek and lowly. Father, give it upon unto them. Father, let your life shine upon them. Everything that is starting in your life, let it be losing. Father, uphold them, O oh Lord. Strengthen them, O oh Lord. Let your let your word continue to reign in your heart and let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. I put your seal upon this one, O so Lord. Father, Satan will not see this one. Henceforth, when Satan see your the henceforth they bear your mark in their body. When Satan sees that mark in their body, they shall flee away. They shall be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your most holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.